Hello, it's a cold, wet and dark evening in England. Summer's officially over, which means I've got more time to make some more Power Apps videos. Been working on some really big projects, so we've got some cool new content. Too much to fit in, so hopefully we'll try and get some videos on the go. Um, today I want to have a look at something really simple that I probably neglected to mention in the past, um, which is variables. I see a lot of people using just global variables, um, not understanding that we can actually use contextual variables in screens. Um, I guess it's quite confusing. Um, there's two different methods we can use. There's the set and update context. So I'm going to run through those by building a quick power app, hopefully give you a little bit of understanding about why we use the different ones and how we can use them as well. So let's jump in. So I'm just going to do this in a simple canvas app, nothing special. I'm just going to create myself a new canvas app. Jump into tablet layout. And now one of the things to understand about variables is variables have been used in coding for quite a long time. It's basically um, a bucket that we can store some information in. So when we talk about variables in coding, we can store a string, which is a bunch of characters, some text, some writing. We can store integers, which are numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we can reuse those variables again and again. We can even reassign them partway through our code. So it's exactly the same um, that we do in Power Apps. It's just that um, we do them slightly differently. So here I have my completely blank app. Now, normally with every app I'm doing, I actually will set variables up initially um, within my app on start. Normally this is for things like branding. So if you check out one of my other videos where I talk about branding, you'll see that I set the branding up before I go and use anything in my app. Now these generally will be global variables. So a global variable I can access anywhere in my app at any time on any screen. So let's go ahead and set some of those up. So we use the function called um, set and then it's going to ask us to put a variable. Now this is the name we want to give it. We can literally call it anything. So here I'm going to put some, uh, I'm going to put a color in. So we're going to say, I'm going to say main color. Apologies for the English spelling if you're in the US, but this is how we do it over here. Then a comma and we're going to give it a value. Um, now, for this, I'm just going to use um, one of the color names. Um, what you can do is use the R RGBA codes if you had a specific value you want to put in. But for simplicity, let's just set that to red. So now, quite simply, all I've done is set up a variable called main color, and I've set it to the color red. So let's have a look. Now, we just need to, um, whenever we're developing, we just need to do our run on start. Um, when our app actually runs, that runs automatically, so we don't have to do anything. But because we're developing, we need to do that run on, on start. So let's run that run on start. Okay, so that's great. So you've set a variable. Now what do we do with it? So what we need to do, let's just go and grab something over here, a rectangle. So here we've got this uh, rectangle. And you can see at the moment it's the color blue. We can normally go over here to the right, and we can change the color. So we could go over and make it red, orange, pink, green. But what I actually want to do is I want to set that to my variable that I created. So either under advanced or my preferred method over here, we can select the fill property. And here it's set to an RGBA value. Now what I can simply do is just type in main color. So because my main color is set to red, that will automatically read that. Fill knows that that is a color and it'll set my square to red. Perfect. Now most people, that's kind of where they leave it. And so what they will then do, um, if we create a new screen in our app here, just a new blank screen. So you've got screen one and screen two. Now if I put my rectangle in again, and this is on my second screen, I can quite easily again select my fill, and set it to main color. So there you go, brilliant. So I've set main color in one place, and now I've got two rectangles that are using it. So in theory, if I go back to my app, I go to my main color, and I say, actually, I want this to be blue. So you'll notice what happened is that hasn't changed. Now that's because, like I said, in development, uh, on start isn't gonna run every time. We need to actually tell it to run. 
So if I just run my on start, there we go. So screen one, rectangle one is blue. Screen two, rectangle two is blue. Perfect. Now, one of the cool things we can do with that variable, as I said, is we can actually change it within our app. So if we just put a button in here and let's put some text just on top of that, that says um, change uh, global variable to pink. Let's bring that out so we can see it. Okay, cool. So we've got our button and we want that to change the variable. So we assign that using the set main color blue in our app. And now if we go to our button and we take the on select and we change that from false, we can change it to set main color. Now you can see the predictive text has picked up the name of my variable. And that's important because if we don't use the same name, we'll be creating a new variable instead of selecting the old one and changing it. So I wanna make sure I'm using the same um, variable name and you can see it already knows that that's a, that's a color and it's blue actually I want that to now mean pink so what will happen if we hold alt um, which means we're playing our app and I press this button there we go the rectangle changed to pink and if we go to our second screen our second rectangle has gone to pink perfect so you can see quite easily you can create these global variables we can have multiple screens now if that variable changes it will change everywhere within our app and that's, like I say, normally where most people stop. Um, but that's not necessarily what we, the behavior that we want to happen because then we'll have loads of different variables. We might have to use different names, screen one, variable two, screen three, variable three. And that's where context comes in um, a lot more handy. And when you start working with list items and you're passing list items to galleries and you're passing items back, you're gonna be using context a lot more. You'll find it simpler and cleaner to do so. Global variables do have a place. Um, like I say, I use those in my app for the branding. So my branding colors will never change. They'll always be the same on all the screens. I don't have to keep passing that context through. I just want to set it once and reuse it. But for the purposes of screens, we may want to change the context. So let's add in a, another um, square rectangle here and let's put in another button now what we're going to do is we're going to call this change context variable and we're going to change the context variable to green now this is where it can get confusing and i think why some people stop set is very easy to do we write set we give the name of our variable comma and then we tell it the color that we want to use the function or method that we actually want to use for context is update context. Now update context, you'll see, asks for a context. So it doesn't take a name of a variable comma and then the actual variable um, information. It wants a little bit more. It actually wants an object. So if we were to create update context, we want to open our curly brackets or create a set of curly brackets. Now the first part of the curly brackets is the variable name. So the same as we use main color, we can use the context here. So we're going to call this screen one color. Now the theory is because I have um, that within the screen, I wouldn't really need to use screen. I could use color here and I could use color in another screen and they could be com two completely different things, which I'll show you. Um, so I call that screen one color, just so we understand what we're talking about now, colon, and then we're going to set that to green. There we go. So our button now updates the context for that screen with a variable called screen one color to green. Now all we need to do is we need to change our rectangle fill. And exactly the same as we were able to select main color, we just need to type in the name of our variable. So we haven't had to pick it in any different way. Um, our screen is aware of the variables available to it. And that will be a combination of the globals as well as the context. So if I pick screen one color, we haven't set it yet, but if I click on this, we've now set our variable to green. And what you will actually notice, if it's visible on the screen there, is a context um, when we use it is actually blue and our pink. The color is actually green, if you could call it green, but they're definitely a different color. So it's a way of then recognizing if you're using a context or a variable. So now what's important to understand is by changing that context to screen one color, 
if I go to my second screen and we were to take this pink and let's try and change the fill to screen one color. Now you notice it doesn't exist and that's because the context is only available for that screen. It doesn't exist in screen two. Screen two doesn't even know what it is. So let's have a look at how we can be clever with that. So let's go back here and simply change our context to color. So we can set color, set our rectangle to color, go to screen two, and we're going to set this to color. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a button that goes to our next screen, and on the way to navigating to the next screen, we're going to send it a um, context. So we're going to tell the next screen as it loads what to set the context to. So instead of just updating the context within this screen, we're going to use the navigate function. We're going to go navigate screen two. And normally you wouldn't notice it, so normally you would just put in navigate screen two. But what we can actually do is we can put a comma. Now we get some more choices. So we have to choose a transition. So the standard is um, screen transition cover. Again, we could just leave that there. But if we put a comma, you'll notice it now says context. So right at the end here, we can actually send a context to the next screen. So let's do a different color. Let's do uh, indigo. Okay, so now what's important to note here is um, I'm not sending the context color. I'm sending a color to the context in screen two color. Um, again, I'll go back over that in a second because it may be confusing, but the important thing to understand here is I'm going to send screen to uh, a color and it's going to set that in its own context. Let's change this so we can go. Uh, we'll call this navigate screen send context. So click this, we'll go to the next screen and you'll see it set my rectangle to indigo. If I go back to screen one, even though this is set to color, it's green. If I go to my second screen, even though this is set to color, it's purple. So we're using two different variables with the same name, but they're within separate screens, so they're treated completely individually. And this is really powerful if you want to be copying screens, because you want to have your context. So we might have a tab on the left hand side. We may use the same variable by copying screen after screen. Now we don't have to go through those screens and we don't have to change all the variables to different names to make sure our globals aren't being changed when we change one. We can use context instead. And then all we have to do is know that that screen itself requires a context color and we can send it the color. Absolutely perfect. So it may have been slightly confusing because like I said, we're using color and color. Um, just to confuse you even more, just in case, is we can actually send variables to variables. So we can actually send the variable, um, the context from this screen color to the color here. So our color is green. If we click this, it's going to send the green to green. So we can pass a variable into a variable. Now, just to eliminate any confusion, what I'm going to do is just show you that with some more contextual context name so that we don't get confused. So let's go back to here and let's say, let's call this screen two color. Indigo. And let's call this screen one color green. So let's set that to screen one color. Let's set this to screen one color. And let's set this to screen two color. Okay, so just so we're clear on what we're doing here. So this one sets a context, which is only available within this screen called screen one color to green. So if we press that button, that's what the uh, color picks up here. Now, if we click on this one, we're sending screen, to, we're sending screen two color, which is the context variable within screen two, the color indigo. And so over here, screen two color becomes indigo. So while you're creating your app, it can get quite confusing. You don't know where your global variables are, your contextual variables are. So one really handy thing, if we go up to view, we've got this variables tab. If we click on variables, it's going to tell us what exists where. And this is a really clear way of seeing what the difference is between a variable and a context. So 
global. We had main color, which is how we were using the pink color and how we were setting it. So we can see that. If we click on it, it's going to tell us where it's being used. So in our app on start, we set it. In our button, we set it. Uh, in uses, we can see screen one dot rectangle one fill is using it. Screen two dot rectangle two is filling it. This is a really good way once you've built your app or if you're partway through and to go and check your variables, see if you've got them in the right place, if they make sense. Are you using global variables all over the place? Is this list really long? Can we make it more contextual to make it more easier to manage um, and a bit cleaner if we need to update it? Let me go on screen one, screen one color. Again, definition, screen one dot button on, on select. We're updating the context and in uses, we're using it in the rectangle. So you can see how quickly we were using that for color. Now, we're not limited um, to color with our variables. We can um, set it to anything. So if I, for example, wanted to set up a variable and call it welcome text, I can set this to simply text. So hi, welcome to my app. Can't type, won't type. So now I have this um, global variable called welcome text. If I were going to want to go into my app, put a little label, let's put it in here. Um, the text we can just set to welcome text. Um, now again, I've set that in my app on start. So I just need to run my app on start, which sets the, <laughs> sets the, the uh, blue back. If we go back to screen one, pop it in there as well. So then we've got two different um, pieces, two different little components with the same text in. I can click my set main color pink, which will change the color to pink. Um, I can change my context variable. I can zoom across and we can see how all that works. So that's the basics of variables. Now variables do get a little bit more complex in that, um, and you may have seen in my other app, we don't have to restrict ourselves to simply putting in colors and text. We can give it whole objects and then we can define them. I'm not gonna go into this in this video. I wanted this to be really quick, just so people get an understanding of how to use set and update context. Um, I'd recommend going away and just trying them out and seeing how it works in different places and really getting used to it. Don't get caught up in just using global variables. Um, you'll find a lot of benefit and a lot of power in using the context variables as well, especially when your apps get bigger and you've got more screens and more things moving around. Um, definitely go and give it a go. So thanks for that quick video. Um, it's good to be back and hopefully we'll be getting more content over to you as soon as possible. Um, again, like the videos, any comments, any questions, chuck them in there. I always jump in and answer. Um, if you have any requests for any videos or if there's anything you want to know, obviously chuck it in the comments as well. And we will go from there. Uh, thanks again and see you guys soon.